importing Excel data into an access table brought to you by Shift Key Solutions and I am Eric Ripley. In this tutorial we're going to talk about the steps involved in importing Excel worksheet data into a access table. This will be the end result of what we will end up creating. We will, before we import our data, we will create a primary key field and also clean up our phone number one field. And this is what it's going to look like. We'll end up with two tables once they're imported. We'll talk about this in a moment. Here we have our Excel data that we'll work with. As you can see, we have our phone number field, but it's not very consistent. So let's clean that up real quick. I'm going to select the entire column or field. I'm going to select the entire column, come to my Home tab, and in my Numbers group, I'm going to click the drop down for our data type and click more number format. From there I'll go to special and choose phone number. I click OK. And nothing changed. So what I have to do is go in here and remove the parentheses, the spaces, and the dashes. How do you propose I do that? Go into each one of these and then come and remove this. Go arrow key, delete, delete, arrow key, delete and then that's it. Well, that could work but I like shortcuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the entire column, come to my find and select and click replace. That will open up my find and replace dialog box. From there I'm going to click in the find what window and put in my first parentheses and then I'm going to click replace all. I'm going to leave this blank because I want to replace the open parentheses with nothing. So I'll click replace. It tells me it did 21 replacements. I'm going to say thank you. Okay. The next one is going to be close parentheses. Replace all. Did 21. Thank you. Now I'm going to backspace and replace that with a dash. And I click replace all. 17 replaced. Good. Thank you. Now I'm not done yet. I need to replace all the blank spaces with nothing so that I have just a hard number in here. Once that's changed to a hard number, Excel will convert this to a phone number format. Come to my find what and press the spacebar one time and click replace all. Before I do, make sure that that's blank. And there it is. 37 replacements. Click OK. Click close. Let's take a look. Yep. That's all replaced. So that was a quick, really fast way of formatting my phone number field so it's all consistent. Next, let's create a primary key field because this is going to go in this data is going to go into an access table. And if you've ever used access, you'll know that you have to have a primary key field. So I'm going to insert a blank here and I'm going to title this primary key. Down here I need to create a primary key. That primary key will be the last name underscore first name with an exclamation mark at the end of it. So how do you think I should do that? Oh, and for that matter, I want it to be uppercase. So that's going to involve a formula. So let's start with our equal sign. I don't want, I don't want it to be all uppercase, right? So I'll do upper. And then I want to concatenate, meaning combined. And I want to combine B2. I want the last name first, comma, open parentheses, underscore, close parentheses, comma, because remember I want the last name capitalized, separated with an underscore, and then first name capitalized. So now I'm going to put A2, comma. Now, I want to end this with a exclamation mark. So I need to do my open quotations and then exclamation mark, close quotations. And then I'm going to close my parentheses. I click my enter check mark, and there it is. There's my unique primary key field. So from there, I'm going to fill this down. There it is. I'll open that up a little bit. There, now I can see them all. Great. So that's all done. I'm going to save this information. And when I save this data, I like to keep the original data just in case I might want to come back and change it a little bit. So in order to keep the original data separate from this newly formatted data, I just give it a new name. I just put the word final at the end of the name. All right, so now I'm going to close this down and let's go to access. So here I am in access. I'm going to 
create a blank database. I'm going to give it a name. And then before I click create, I want to double check the path. So if that's not the correct path, I'm going to click this folder here and put it in the correct folder. Now that I have it in the correct folder, I'm going to click create. So here we are. Access automatically opens for me with a blank table for me to start entering data into it. Well, that's not what I want, so I'm going to click the close button over here. Say thank you, but no thank you. I'm going to come over to my external data, and in my import and link group, I'm going to click Excel. From there, I'm going to click Browse to identify the Excel table I want. Now that I've identified the appropriate Excel workbook I want, I'm going to take a look at my choices here. I have import the source data into a new table in the current database, or I can link the data source by creating a linked table. This can be very useful in some cases. In this example, I'm going to use import, so I'm going to click OK. From there, I want to make sure that I have my first row contains column headers selected, and there they are. I'm going to click Next. And here's where I can choose to identify the field types. I'm going to leave those as they are and click Next. Here's where I choose my primary key field. I'm going to click Choose My Own Primary Key Field. And there's my primary key. We created that earlier. Click Next. And then give it a name. I'll leave that as the name. Click Finish. So here we have it. We have two tables that have been imported. Let's first take a look at this import errors table. If I open this up, I can see that the import errors, there's a conversion failure, meaning that some of the zip codes didn't convert over. And if you were to go back in this video and look at the zip code field in the Excel table, you'll see that not all of the zip codes were true zip codes. Some of them said Australia, some of them had different names in it. But this is what this means. So you want to make sure that your data is all correct in your Excel worksheet before you import it to avoid this from happening. So let's go to our imported table. And here it is. I've had a lot of people tell me that they are frustrated with doing this because some of the data is truncated. And indeed, it is truncated. Again, the word truncated means that the data goes underneath the column next to it. As you can see, I can't read all of this. Well, that doesn't mean I have to live with it. You know, that's not a big deal. All I have to do is kind of like with an Excel, I'm going to click this little select all button here. And then I'm going to go to the line separating one of the columns and double click. And that's an auto fit. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, that is easily fixed. Now, I've also seen some comments or I've had students actually tell me they've done this in the past. And when they do, the field headers change. And as you can see here, these field headers are all the same as in my Excel worksheet. So there's no trouble there. I'm not sure what the circumstances were those for those people in the past, but this is just as it is. Now, real quick, let's just take a look. I got my primary key field that I've created, and here's the phone number field. It does not look like a phone number. So here's a quick, down and dirty way to fix that. We're going to go to our Home tab and choose our Design View. So here we are in Design View. I'm going to come down to our phone number and change this from a number to text. And then from text, I'm going to come down to my field properties and click the input mask. And then click my ellipse button here. Yes, I want to save it first. And here are my choices. Here's the phone number. Wow. Click Next. Good. That's the way it's going to appear. Click Next. Now, I have two choices here. Without the symbols in the mask like this, it'll display like this. Or with them displayed like this, like a phone number. I'm going to choose this. Click Next, and then Finished. Great. Now let's go back to Data Sheet View. Yes, I'll save my changes. Let's take a look. Wow. Shazam. Let me open that up. There's our phone number. Now you'll see some of the phone numbers have only two characters in the area code. Well, that's out of country phone numbers or what have you. So anyway, those are the steps involved in importing an Excel worksheet into an access table. I hope this was helpful. and. If you didn't know how to do this beforehand, now you know. And I encourage you to share this information with as many people who might need help with this. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to comment, and don't forget to visit our advertisers. Thank you.